He's still here. Um, I would never uh, get you to turn off Radio Scotland to turn on to BBC One TV, but if you uh, if you do that, you'll see a man in a kilt just about to be interviewed by our friend Mike Bushell. Ah, well, there we go. Uh, you've been you've been trumped, gazumped. Phil, thanks a million for that. We'll see you back here very soon before I'm sure you head back out to the World Cup when Scotland's interests resume in a couple of weeks' time. The time now is half past eight. On digital radio, FM, your smart speaker, and on BBC Sounds, BBC Radio Scotland. News as sport for the borders with Graham McGregor. Good morning. The forced closure of Hoyk swimming pool at the weekend is just the latest setback to hit leisure operators' live borders. The trust has come under fire in recent months after emergency cash was required from Scottish Borders Council to keep the doors open at Eyemouth Swimming Pool and the Geitz Leisure Centre in Peebles following mechanical failures. A broken boiler is being blamed for the problems at Teviedale Leisure Centre with the pool expected to be out of use for weeks if not months. Councillor David Park who has been critical of Live Borders in recent months, believes Live Borders' track record is unacceptable. The simple fact is Live Borders aren't properly looking after the facilities that they're paid to manage. And what we're seeing is a whole host of uh, maintenance failures because they've not been doing routine planned maintenance and facilities are having to be closed. And obviously the worry is they're going to, they're going to want to come back to the council again for even more money in an unscheduled way and that's very difficult for, for the council you know, to, to always fund so the, the facts are live borders are not delivering a, a quality service and there, there's real question marks I have to say about their competence and whether they should continue as an organisation I think because how they've performed in recent months is simply unacceptable if you've been in hospital in recent years with a respiratory condition, you can expect a call or a text from a doctor sometime soon. NHS Borders have drafted in staff to work their way through some 1,400 patients in a bid to cut waiting lists and bring the records up to date. David Knox has more. Whether you are admitted for pneumonia, chronic bronchitis, severe asthma or any other respiratory ailment that required a hospital treatment, NHS Borders is looking to contact you. It's understood that as many as 1,400 former BGH patients are on a list which is being worked through by doctors so they can update records and cut waiting times. NHS Borders say that they have taken a number of steps to review and update their respiratory services waiting list, including additional consultant capacity. They will review notes, contact each patient and, where necessary, make appointments for follow-ups. NHS Borders is also being supported by the NHS Scotland National Elective Coordination Unit at NHS Golden Jubilee in Clyde Bank, who are currently running a new text messaging service to ensure notes on each patient are up to date. NHS Borders state that any patient who they can't contact by phone or text will be sent a letter. NHS Borders Annual Review takes place today in Gala Shields. Joining the senior staff and executives from the NHS Borders Board will be Jenny Minto, MSP, the Minister for Public Health and the Chief Executive of NHS Scotland, Caroline Lamb. The review, which is open to the public, runs from 2 to 3pm at the Tapestry Centre. One of the oldest and largest sheep sales in Europe took place on Friday since 1838. Kelso ram sales have been attracting sales from all over the country. And yet again, the Kelso sales produced some eye-catching returns. Top price for lambs was £25,000 for a Suffolk, while £36,000 was the top figure paid for a Texel shearling. Retired Ancrum farmer Willie Sandilands was given the honour of ringing the bell to open Friday's sales. The 84-year-old was honoured to have been asked. I've been involved with rams every year, no or less since, since I left the school really and before I used to come, two years before I left the school and it's the best place for the buy rams really, all the best cheaper here and all different breeds. Oh no, and although they put in a strong first half in their highly physical opening World Cup match against South Africa and Marseille, Scotland fell short in the face of the powerful defending champions. The border sole representative Darcy Graham, uh, Darcy Graham featured in Scotland's best scoring chance. Scotland's next match is against Tonga on Sunday 24 September. In local rugby, Hoyt lost their unbeaten record at Mar going down 24-5 at Fullerton Park. And for the second week running, Kelso drew a match 24 all at home to Heriot's Blues. Kelso coach Kenny Utterson. The boys showed that character again they showed last week and had a lot of good phases, took the kick off and worked their way up the park to get the penalty to draw the game. Far more positives than, uh, than negatives but it's probably one that got away for us again. Probably should have won the game last week and probably should have won the game this week so that's, that's the big positive. 
Also in the Premiership, Selkirk lost 45-19 against Glasgow Hawks at Belgrave, while Curry were too strong for Jed, running out winners by 54 points to 7. Better news from National League Division 1, with Gallagher returning round a 69-point loss last week to beat GHA by 22-15, while Melrose piled on the points at home to GHK, winning 68-7. In Division 2, there's a good win for Peebles at Stewart's Melville, while, Bennett, uh, while Berwick went down to Stirling County. In Athletics, borderer Sammy Kinghorn won the Women's Elite wheelchair race at the Great North Run and finally Speedway and an 8th defeat on the road for Berwick Bandits saw them go down 58-32 to Scunthorpe Scorpions but some pride was restored when they were back at Shalefield defeating Plymouth 52-38 and now with the borders weather here is Joy Dunlop Today will be a mostly cloudy day with just the odd sunny spell and patchy rain or showers developing in places. Although it will turn drier by this evening as sunshine begins to spread in from the northwest. Moderate westerly winds turning northwesterly with highs of 16 to 19 Celsius. This evening we'll see any thicker cloud and lingering showers sinking to the southeast, leaving skies largely clear overnight with just the odd patch of cloud at times. BBC Radio Scotland forecast for the borders. Get the latest news on your smart speaker whenever you want. Just say, play BBC News for Scotland. Time now, 24 minutes to nine. You're listening to Good Morning Scotland with Laura Maxwell and Martin Geisler. As we've been reporting this morning, Rishi Sunak is facing pressure from within his own party to take stronger action against China. It comes after a parliamentary researcher was arrested under the Official Secrets Act, accused of spying for Beijing. Some senior Conservative MPs have called for China to be categorised as a threat to UK interests and national security. Well, Gordon Carrera is the BBC's security correspondent. Good morning to you, Gordon. Good morning. Thanks for being with us this morning. Um, there, there are limits as to what we can say in terms of the specifics of this story, obviously, given um, the, the nature of proceedings. But, but tell me first, what, what um, difference would it make if China were categorised as a threat to UK interests? Well, there's one element where it's um, a, a, about the language, but the language also has some consequences. There are uh, there is legislation which um, re- places different requirements on um, countries which are deemed to be uh, more hostile or adversarial. So, for instance, there's a foreign influence registration scheme which is just coming into effect where people have to say if they are working on behalf of a foreign state, but there is an enhanced tier for countries which are designated as more hostile, where anyone working for them in any way, even in the private sector, might have to, uh, uh, in certain conditions, you know, kind of declare themselves. So there are some practical consequences to this, but I also think it is also political. It is something which, uh, particularly within the Conservative Party, where there are hawks on China who feel that the government, um, you know, their own government is not tough enough on China, they want to use this as a means of pressure and have seen it as a way of bringing pressure to bear. So it is partly about the practical consequences, but it's also, I think, about the politics. Yeah, I mean, Ian Duncan Smith, for example, quoted this morning as saying, lives are at risk here. We need to recognise that the Chinese government poses a clear and present danger. Strong quotes. Uh, How much pressure will Rishi Sunak be feeling politically on this then? I think he. I think the pressure is real because it's come at a, a very interesting moment. This story about the uh, about the um, alleged uh, interference in Parliament, because we've just had in the last month the Foreign Secretary James Cleverly go to China. Very unusual visit. We haven't seen that level of high level visits in the past, and that was a sign that really Rishi Sunak's government is trying to uh, open more doors with China. 